And Steven Hermsmeyer at Troy told us this week he wanted to see more from his offense after turnovers the past two weeks. Would he get his wish tonight? Only time would tell a packed house at Trojan Stadium under a full moon. You know what that means. Wacky stuff <laughs> inbound. Tied at seven in the first quarter in Cooper Cisneros. The QB for the Eagles dives up the middle. His second rushing score of the night. And the Eagles lead by eight after the two-point conversion. So it's 15-7 then. Ensuing Troy drive. It's Ethan Sorensen to Cooper Vale. That's a touchdown. And the Trojans are within one. It's 15-14. And ladies and gentlemen, we're still in the opening frame. A drive later, penalties keep the Trojans in it. And on third down, Sorensen finds Hunter Fowler wide open in the corner of the end zone. The closest defender was still getting on the bus in Rogers. The Trojans lead 21-15 here in the second. And it's the next to Eagle drive. Cisneros rolls out, ball hit off on the Oski drill. Eagles have it going the other way right before half. Penalties would stall the drive. Beep, beep. <laughs> And with just over a minute to play, Sorensen throws a pop fly, and the Eagles come down with it. They go into the half, up 21-15. Final score, all Rodgers, 28-21. Maybe not all Rodgers, but, but a good a, win. A good win, a good win. A good win, <laughs> and you know who had a front row seat to this one? Matt Lively. Matt, this was a good one. Yeah, it really was, and you guys were saying it right there. Steven Hermsmeyer said that he wanted to get this offense started early. They did exactly that. Scored 21 points in the first half, but it was that second half where it just seemed like nothing was clicking. I'll tell you what, I came in here in the third, and it just seemed like wherever Troy was moving the ball to, an Eagle defender was there to meet them. The pivotal moment in this game came in the fourth quarter. Nine minutes left, Troy marching down the field. Fumble, turnover, and that was all she wrote. There was nine minutes at that point. Uh, the Eagles were able to tick off five minutes off the clock, and then Troy couldn't do anything after that. They accomplished coming out, scoring early. But I had said earlier in this game, they've got to keep up. They didn't keep up in the second half. Uh, Rodgers is a really good team for a reason, but I was really impressed with what I saw from Troy here tonight. They just didn't play a full four quarters. Uh, but a lot of promising football here from the Troy Trojans. I was really impressed overall. Uh, but as we've said, just couldn't get those four quarters done. Really good game. I love these game of the weeks. They're just so much fun to be out here. Uh, Garrett Wolf was telling me in the post game that he actually didn't know much about this rivalry coming in. They hadn't played since 2015, so these kids are young. They don't know much. But if you had asked me that, if they had known nothing, I, I wouldn't have believed you because these – fan sections going back and forth at each other. It was electric. It was very fun to watch, and I really hope this becomes an annual game that they get back into the mix because it was a lot of fun to watch. Guys, lots more to talk about, but I'll send it back to you for the rest of the highlights. The last time these two teams played for these seniors would have been when they were in fifth grade. So things children. change. Yeah, things change. <laughs> Legitimate yeah. children, and they are now grown men. Uh, Matt, one question I have for you. Rogers, <laughs> uh, there are three 3A ball clubs in Bell County. That's Academy, that's Troy, who are both in the same district, and Rogers. Rogers, obviously the smallest of the three, being the 3A Division II team. What was it that sets them apart from these two clubs? Because they, they, they finished the two-team sweep of Bell County. Yeah, well, I'm going to go ahead and say defense. Uh, obviously, they beat Academy there in week one. Now they've got the Troy win off their belts. But to come out the way they did in the second half, it was a completely different defensive unit than I saw in that first half. Uh, I, I just it was, it was like the Trojans couldn't move the ball down the field. And when they did, they forced a turnover. So it's really textbook stuff by Charlie Roten's squad. Uh, defense is going to be the difference in 3A here. You know what they say, more points wins games. Defense. And defense wins championships. It does. All right, Matt, <laughs> that's why we pay you the big bucks, sir. We'll check in with you here in big picture. Thank you, sir. All right, one team that's been very impressive this season so far is Salado. <laughs> After changing coaches, the Eagles are still sore. Two games, two wins, one against a playoff team in 4A Division One, the other against 5A Brian Rudder. And there's no easing up before district play. Not at all. Eagles facing powerhouse Malakoff tonight at Waco ISD Stadium. And after the Eagles jumped out to a 7-0 lead, it was a defensive struggle for the rest of the first half. Late second quarter, quarterback Mike Jones connects. No, he's running. He runs it down and he, oh, and he drops it. There's a fumble. That's and that's a fumble. all Salado. Yes. Later that same drive, the Tigers try to run the triple option. There's the fumble you see. Salado oh, yeah, goes there's... three and out. Yep. So the next drive. 
Jones tries to hit Jason Tennyson on the screen pass, but senior Adams sniffs out the play, and that would go nowhere. I'm sensing a defensive struggle yes, in this game. Yes, yes, just a little bit, just a little bit. Now Tennyson here, nowhere to go. Benavidez again on the tackle. A hype crowd for this one, 7-0 like at the fun. half. Malikoff edges Salado 29-27 in overtime. Cameron, the Cameron Yeomen have scored 60 <laughs> points or more in their first two games, hosting a Connolly squad riding high off its first win over La Vega in eight years. Uh, here Braylon Drake rolls out, finds Pater. Yo goes for two, and it's another out route. And then later, Braylon Drake going to throw a nasty touchdown route here. Beautiful throw for the Yeoman. Uh, we showed you only Yo highlights, but uh, check this out on the final score. It's Connolly with the last lap. That was an awesome game. 45-40 is your final. Mejia's brutal non-district tour continues tonight at China Spring. The Black Cats' second straight week facing a reigning state champ. Now the QB, Catch McCollum, oh no, it's picked off. And he's running down the field. He makes a little progress, doesn't get straight to the end zone, but he takes it down the field. Now, Cougars catch McCollum, throws downfield under center. He takes it and he launches it down that field in the hands of receiver Cameron Campos. He takes that one to the house for six. And that just ties the bow on a shutout first half for the Cougars, 42 to zero. Final score, 63-7 Cougars. Good night. Mejia is a, just a brutal schedule. How about Lynn Passes punching up in weight class tonight facing Georgetown Eastview, a 5A ball club. Uh, they tried to plant the flag. It didn't work. <laughs> Lynn Passes is David Flores rolls right and finds him in the end zone. That's number six. Uh, was not on the roster tonight, so we're going to refer to him from here on out as number six. <laughs> so later on, you see the uh, field goal here for, uh, for the Patriots. It's good. It's all the way back to the locker room. And then watch this again. It's David Flores. And who else is he going to go to? Ooh. Remember when we said we were referring to him from here on out? Yeah, it's number six number again. Six. So a 25 <laughs> yard touchdown route into the corner of the end zone. Um, then, <laughs> to put this into perspective, they connected again on another touchdown in the first half. 48 39, Lamp Passes gets the win. Robinson hitting the road, looking to quack out another win at Taylor. Robinson, Christian Luhan. Oh, into the end zone. Into the end zone, right then and there. Easy. Easy does it. That cuts the Taylor now, lead to 20 to QB, 12. Jarvis Anderson has a long touchdown pass. Whoa, look at that. All the way down the field. Boom. Takes that to the house for six. Easy. And they uh, make it look easy. Yeah. Final score. 41-19. The Ducks take the dub. All Taylor tonight. A lot of neighborly matchups this week as McGregor hosts Gatesville, looking for its fir first win this season. Get your nachos for Ooh, this one. Good. I like mine with jalapenos, please. <laughs> uh, Bulldogs, one if by land, two if by air. So they go air. J.I. Singer to Zachary Ainsworth. Ainsworth does the rest. That's a McGregor first down, and the Bulldogs back to work on the ground, as they've been known to do. Sebastian Torres sheds tacklers, bounces to the outside, and gets to the corner. It's another first down, but this drive would stall on the three yard line and come to a complete end on a missed field goal attempt. That would give the Hornets their chance. This pass, obvious push. I could have called that pass interference and I wasn't even at that game. Flag. A couple plays later, it's Jimmy Hall punching in the game's first score. Hornets go for two, come up short six, nothing after one. So uh, Gatesville gets the win. McGregor is 0 and three. Okay, let's talk <laughs> Belton. From 2007 to 2013, Rodney Southern led the Belton Tigers to the playoffs in Class 6A before leaving to take over at Huntsville, where he's built the Hornets into a consistent winner in 5A. Now, for the first time since he left, he returns to Tiger Field tonight, donning green and white this time. Tigers and Hornets facing off in a high-octane offensive matchup. Belton starts the game strong. Sean Snap runs it in for the touchdown here. That is a seven, or excuse me, Followed by a field goal, the D-line stopped the Hornets just short of the end zone. And then on the following play, they pushed back Austin Taylor from Huntsville. That's a touchdown. That's the pushback <laughs> on the following play. Here's Austin Taylor's touchdown for the Hornets. Now they've been known to score in bunches and apparently they can get a nice little push from that offensive line. What a play to follow through on that final score to this one is 41-28. Belton gets the win. 
Now, last night, Waco High hosting Granberry in their District 4 5A Division 1 opener. All right, <clears throat> that's broken off first pass. Now, first quarter, the line offense lagged. Isaiah Lewis looking for Reggie Lewis Jr., and it's picked off. He's running down the field, but he doesn't get far enough. Oh, just wait. But there's more. Quarterback goes back. He's looking. He finds the open man, and he's taken down again, but makes some progress. That's a nice little stop there yeah, from nice Waco High. Now he takes a snap again. Yards. Looks downfield, connects, and takes it to the house. Walt Hartman to Jayton Glenn for that one. What a, what a touchdown. So that after a safety, it's 8-0. They tack on a field goal toward the end of the first quarter. It's 11-0. 45-3 is All your final. All Pirates. Rockdale <clears throat> hosting rival Lexington tonight in a battle for Highway 77. Now the quarterback throws it downfield. Bomber. Beautiful. Beautiful throw. All right, their defense comes in. Oh, he's running down. Oh, he breaked up that defensive stop right there. He keeps going. He said, no, sir, I'm going to keep going. He's just short of the end zone. How many guys touched him? Three? Like four? Yeah. All right, he takes a snap again. Same guy running. Doesn't get there quite yet. This guy's tough, though. He's bouncing through all those defenders. This is a heated rivalry game. Jeez. The touchdown. Uh, for the Eagles there, and then they go back through the air. Nice pass down center. It's the same this, guy. It, it looks there like he goes. it looks like Lexington is just get the ball to and number goes, five, and, and it worked. 33-18 is six. your final score tonight. CTCS has a veteran squad, and in 2020 won a playoff game in taps for the first time since moving up to 11-man football more than 10 years ago. The Lions expect to make another run this year, and tonight debuted a new turf field. Check out the dedication on this beautiful Friday. Some nice helmets in Leaf Johnson's second year. Uh, what was prettier than was this Milano touchdown run right as uh, Matt Lively walked into this game. So Milano strikes first and then John uh, Josh Miller takes it to the house. It's 7-0 on their next drive. How about this tough running from Ethan Gordon? He's got five defenders on top of him. And two plays later, he sets himself up for this easy touchdown run right up the gut. It's 13-0 Milano at that point. All Milano, 41-7 is your final. Moody is hosting Hubbard tonight on homecoming night for the Bearcats. Now, homecoming at Moody and the Bearcats, you know, look at those cute girls. They look so pretty in their homecoming outfits. All right, Bearcats take the you snap. You had a moment. You had a moment with the homecoming court. I did. I had a moment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I had a moment. Okay, back to it. Back to it. <laughs> oh, look, here's the cheerleaders cheering them on. Third Bearcat score of the night, of the first half. Woo, look at that throw down field. Oh, he said not so fast. Nope. All right, Moody, Moody quarterback throws it downfield. Oh, he's running. He's running. Does he take it all the way? He keeps going. I'm going to guess he does. Does he? That's Tucker Staten. And he does. Tucker leaps for that touchdown in the end zone. 38-8. 38-8. Let's head to Axel hosting Dawson last night. Three seconds to go until halftime. Brant Boatwright lofts one up. It's off the Longhorns' fingertips straight into Haston Easley's arms. Throw them up 18-16 in the third quarter as uh, we come out of the locker room. So third down for Dawson, boat right, looking left. Jace Johnson that time, the two-point conversion, pushes the lead to 10. It's 26-16. Ensuing drive, Colton Horn to Kelby Hollingsworth to the outside, finds the pylon. Touchdown, two-point conversion, cuts it to two. It's 26-24. Dawson wins it 44-38. All right. It's time now for one of our favorite parts of this show, Gridiron Player of the Week. For this week's Nicole, you went to Cameron. What a beautiful time to go to Cameron with a Connolly Cameron Yo matchup yeah. tonight. I mean, explosive performance sparking an explosive offense. And that's why Cardarius Bradley won Gridiron Player of the Week, Kurt. They want to see me run like that more in the game. I plan on doing that also. Cameron Yo Jr. running back Cardarius Bradley doesn't just run. He sprints all over that field. As soon as he breaks through, I'm like, it's either a touchdown, he's getting at least 30 yards. You know, he's a real fast guy. I wanted fast on the team. Last Friday, those runs turned into touchdowns, five of them. Second play, seen the hole, I took it, scored. Second touchdown, the hole opened up wide for me, took that. That was my second touchdown, my third touchdown. I was at the 30 yard line, got that. Went 28 zone, got to the sideline, scored. Then my fourth one was, it's a lot. Uh, I think it was like on the five yard line, broke away for that. 
The list could go on and on and on. The running back slot is somewhat new for Bradley, a role he stepped into on the JV squad last year, switching from wide receiver. But it doesn't stop there. He also has a job to do at corner. What we do is, is we rotate him out every third series at running back uh, so that we can get him in the game and, and play corner. And so he's, I mean, he, he's done whatever we've asked him to do. He works extremely hard to be the best running back he can be, but he also works extremely hard to be the best corner that he can be. A double threat who puts in the extra work to be the best. He does real hard work at dude. That's why I trust him so much in the backfield. As soon as he gets the ball, I expect a whole lot out of him. Expectations are high for Bradley, and he continues to perform on the field. But it takes a battle in the trenches to open up the green. You know, I pat him on the back and told him that, you know, you had a heck of a game. That was a good game. Make sure you thank your offensive lineman. Don't worry, coach. He sure did. I wouldn't have played like that without my O-line. They helped me a lot through that, so I really appreciate them. The O-line running back connection is strong for this squad. And the best part? Well, this is just the beginning. I think he's going to be somebody that you're going to hear a lot about, you know, especially if our offensive line keeps blocking the way it is. Kurt, it may not have gone Yo's way tonight, but Bradley is going to be key to that offense. Especially with District 11, 3A Division 1 play starting in two weeks. Yep. Awesome performance from him last week. Okay, one other 4A score tonight. La Vega on the road at Midlothian Heritage. Not a good night for the Pirates, 41-14, no. although Heritage made the jump to 5A. All right, some 2A scores for you. The Bobcats took the dub 42 to 20 against the Eagles and the Pirates with a shutout 43 to 0 against Rio Vista. Crawford doing what Crawford does. How about Thorndale all over Riesel tonight 54 21. Rosewood Lot 36, Goldthwaite 14. 38 36 final, the Bearcats take the win against the Valley Mill Eagles and the Granger Lions with a 28 to 20 win over the Hornets. Holland, wow. Mark. Wow. All mark, all night. Hey, guess what? They just scored again, 68-7 over Italy. Uh, Bartlett getting the win, 47-6. How about that for Brian Cosma's ball club on the road at Meridian? 64-6, the Chilton Pirates came Ooh. to play tonight against the Panthers. 50-22, the Bremen Tigers take down the Sandys. What a performance there in 1A. Uh, last check on this one, 32-0 Abbott over Keene in the second. My guess is uh, that was a 45-point uh, mercy rule win. 66-20, mm. Oakwood over Aquila. All right, we got some one, more 1A scores. 52-37, the Jonesboro Eagles came to play tonight also. And then the Tigers at 50-34 over the Owls. Ogles be looking good. Uh, so Bishop Riker's game against Dallas Shelton canceled tonight. Uh, when I texted Billy Overshone, he said that injuries have their roster too small to safely play tonight. They're hoping to get back on the field next Friday night. Live Oak all over Vanguard tonight, 50 to nothing. Wiley Prep, Patriots, and the Bulldogs, they're actually going to play tomorrow. That game got moved. It got moved. Yep. Zephyr takes down Eagle Christian, 54 to 6. Okay. I like this part of the show. It's the and best part of the show. It, it really is. Let's <laughs> talk big picture. Let's bring Matt Lively back into the fold. Um, so, Matt, any results that stick out to you tonight? Because to me, it's Mark. Well, I actually ran into Kevin Hoffman last night at the Axel game. I don't think you should be surprised, Curtis. Uh, I brought up, I said, Coach, come on, let's talk about this Marlin game. It's crazy. And he, he, he just has so much confidence in his team. Uh, and the fact that they go out night after night, week after week, and they drop these ridiculous lopsided scores, seriously, something is in the water in Mark, Texas. I don't know what it is, but these kids are just different. When you go to a Mark Panthers game, the, it sounds different when pads hit pads. Uh, I'm not surprised whatsoever by Mart. Not surprised, but it is interesting to see Lake Belton first district play. Um, I had them as a dark horse coming into this season, and they were really good last year when they weren't sanctioned by UIL play. Now they are, and they are proving me correct right now. I think this Lake Belton team is going to be really fun to watch and they could be in the playoffs here very soon. And an overtime win on the road to open district play is not a bad way to do it. Any results we, that stick out to you? Can we talk about the elephant in the room guys? La Vega oh. tonight? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that one sticks out. That not just in a sticks good way. out a little bit to me. Um, they're very Matt, you were at their practice. Is it offense or defense that they're super young on? 
Uh, I believe it is their offense this year that they are very young at. And it showed. 41-14. It's, it's, it's just crazy that they go playing Connolly, lose by one, to then something like this. I don't know. I was taken aback. I was too. I thought that game would be a lot closer. I thought they had a legit shot to win it because right. that's been kind of a, a back and forth rivalry over the years between them uh, and Midlothian Heritage. Um, I like, I, I want to see what Temple does moving forward. Yeah. That, that loss to College Station kind of sticks out a little bit to me. Shoemaker within five of the team that was picked to win uh, District 4, 5A Division 1. Um, any other teams that you guys thought stood out this week? I'll be very honest. This week was very shallow at the top of the schedule, but there was a lot of meat in the middle that for nerds like us, we can dissect <laughs> a lot from those games. I'll say this. Troy did not get the win, but I was really impressed with how they played. Um, I just talked with Coach Hermsmeyer off camera while I was waiting for you guys to come back to me, and he said, you know, gosh, we, we handed the game away down on the other end of the field when they had a turnover. They were right there. Um, penalties cost them, and that turnover cost them, but I was really impressed with Troy tonight. Nicole? I will say Robinson yeah. tonight. That was, you know, a little surprising to me. 2-0 and before. They dropped it on this one. But I will say something about Troy, Matt. When I talked to Coach Hermsmeyer on Monday, he did say, he called, he hit the nail on the head. He said, it's turnovers. That's our problem. And that's what caused And that's tonight. exactly what happened. So it's nice to hear, Matt, that you saw some good things from that squad. It's the beginning of the season. They're going to work those kinks out, hopefully. So my, the team I want to point out, Harker Heights, that's their win so far. Ellison, Smithson Valley, Round Rock, Cedar Ridge. Mm. Those are not teams to look down on, especially yeah. not. Uh, for Harker Heights. I thought that th that game was back and forth and to see uh, Heights be able to be the more physical team and get the win is a huge, uh, a huge plus. Matt, you're a company man <laughs> and you went to Arizona State. I went to Oklahoma State. We heard Nicole talk about her Georgia Bulldogs Here on we this go. show go last dogs, week. Baby. <laughs> um, so we don't need to talk about Georgia. <laughs> I'm an Oklahoma State grad, sir. Um, I know we've talked off the air, but I'd like to put a wager on tomorrow's game. So, uh, and then we'll talk Baylor for just a second before we end the show. Uh, how about the loser has to wear the winner's colors the next time they anchor after this game? That's fair. I would say I would get my ASU hockey jersey ready for you to wear. I don't think my Sun Devils are going to get it done. I'm just not confident. Not a Herm Edwards guy. 11 and a half point underdogs on the road in Stillwater. Don't feel confident, but I'm going to take you up on this wager because I am a man of the company. Go Devs. Fair enough. Wow. Matt just okay. kind of gave that one to you. He though. really did. Uh, one key for the Bears tomorrow night at BYU. I got a 6.45 a.m. flight, so I'm bouncing out of here as soon as we're off the air. For me, it's penalties. You cannot. You have to keep the ball going forward. Nicole? I will say BYU without their two top receivers. It's looking good. I okay. mean, I think that's a, that's a plus for Baylor. That but is a huge key. Matt, one key? Yeah, Tyler Algier is gone. He's with the Falcons. Dave Aranda talked about Jaron Hall all week. Without those two top receivers, like Nicole just said, uh, the Baylor chances are looking a whole lot better. They are looking a whole lot different. We will have live coverage for you tomorrow from Provo. That's it for us on Friday Night Lights, week three in the books. For Nicole Shearer and Matt Lively, producer Ethan Clark, Rob Kelso, Michael Graham, and all of us working the late shift here at 6 News, I'm Curtis Quillen saying so long. We'll see you next week under the light.